Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at the ways that you may be narcissistically codependent. You might be bonded to someone and not know why. Now here are the signs that we're gonna go through in a minute, signs to look out for that you can tick off to check. If you're hitting these signs, if you're hitting a lot of these signs, even if you're just hitting one of these signs, they're warning signs, things to watch out for. So let's go through them without further ado. Now the first one is, are you, struggling to say no if someone asks you to do something if someone is asking for a favor are you thinking i can't say no i don't want to let this person down have you basically got no boundaries set up so that when someone asks you to do something that becomes a thing you do because you're afraid to let them down now sign number two is you're constantly seeking reassurance you're wanting people to tell you that it's okay that you're okay that you're enough and if people don't say this to you you get upset, you get hurt. You're getting hurt because people aren't telling you you're enough. So what you do, you go and try and get reassurance. You try and people please. You try and become someone that people want to have around because you're doing stuff for them because you're always there for them. If this is you, if you're finding that you're looking outside for reassurance, for validation, this means that you are likely in a codependent relationship. If you're always looking to that one person, you are likely in a codependent relationship with that one person. If you're looking to them for the reassurance, rather than looking to yourself, rather than going to yourself and going, you know what, you're enough. Looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. If you can't look in the mirror and say, I love you, likely you are struggling with issues of codependency. Number three, you're ignoring your own needs. You're putting the needs of other people first instead. You might have needs, but you don't know what they are. You probably haven't thought about them for such a long time. And even if they do crop up, you probably think, you know what, I'll leave that need, I'll leave that until another day because it's not that important. Because what is important to you is other people. You're always thinking about other people. You're not thinking about your needs. So your need gets put away. Your need gets shoved to the side. Your need gets thrown over the fence because you're not putting yourself first enough. Number four is you feel responsible for the other person. You're not responsible for them, but you think you're responsible for them. Everything you do is to for them because you think if they're in trouble, you've got to be there. If they need you, you've got to be there. You know, it's like you're a mother for a child and this is always happening. You're always playing these roles that you need to be the mother, you need to be the parent, you need to be the dad, and they are, have to be the child and you have to be there for them because they're not capable on their own. So you're thinking, oh, I gotta make sure that I'm always there. What do they need? Do they need anything? I can't let my baby cry. If this is you, then likely you are codependent. Number five is you need to be needed. If you're the sort of person who's always putting someone else before you, because rather than needing something for yourself, rather than being there for yourself, you're looking at someone else and going, what do they need? Because you want them to need you. You feel like you need them to need you. So what you do, you put them first because you need that, because you're thinking, who am I without them? I am no one without them needing me. My purpose in life is to be needed. So you're putting them first. Another sign of codependence. Number six, you avoid any type of conflict. You don't like to argue. Even though when you argue, sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes couples, sometimes relationships in general, friendships, relationships with your parents, Sometimes we have to argue. We have to say, hey, this is what I want. Hey, this is the way I see the world. Now, it doesn't mean you're right, it doesn't mean you're wrong, it doesn't mean you have to have a big ego. But if you're afraid of saying, hey, I would like to go and do this today, because you're afraid that it might turn into a conflict, if you're always avoiding conflict, this shows that you are putting the other person first. This means that you're dependent on the other person for them to have their needs fulfilled, rather than for you to get your needs fulfilled. Or maybe you're the fixer. Maybe you're the person who's always there to problem solve. If there's a problem, great. It means you can be there to solve it. Now, I love solving problems myself, but there comes a time when you have to learn to set that boundary. Which problems do you solve? Which problems do you allow them to solve for themselves? If you are always there looking for validation, going, hey, I solved your problem, aren't I amazing? then that means that you're relying on this person to give you that validation. You want to be the fixer. You want to be the healer. You want to be the solution for their problems. 
Without that, you feel like you are not worth it. This means you lack a sense of self-worth. You lack that sense of being enough just by being you. You don't have to solve, fix a problem to be enough. Number eight is you don't have a purpose. You don't have a direction. You don't have a North Star to follow. So when you do this, what you do, you give the map to someone else and you say, hey, where are we going? And they say, hey, we're going this direction. And you're like, okay, I will just follow along. Now this only works for so long until you start to feel like, I don't know what is going on anymore. I've lost all sense of direction. I've lost meaning in my life. I have no purpose. You'll start to feel down, depressed, and anxious because you're thinking, what the hell am I doing here? And all this leads to a lack of identity, not knowing who you are, not knowing what it is inside you, not looking at your core values, your core wounds, whatever it is that's making you tick, move from here, move away from something, afraid to go forward or afraid to even dream about a bigger vision. Without knowing what your vision is, without knowing what your goals are, without knowing what your dreams are, without knowing what could be, you're always going to be lacking identity. You need to have a mission statement in life. You need to have something in life that tells you where you're going, that purpose, that drive, that sense of being enough as you are. And this all comes from your core. So if you're avoiding this core, if you're avoiding this identity, you are stuck in this position. Someone who's codependent struggles to be themselves. They struggle to be themselves on their own. They struggle to allow themselves to have fun, have joy, because they're always thinking about someone else. This isn't healthy. And if you are struggling with this right now, feel free to get in contact because we would love to help. We have a program that we are starting very soon and we're going to be running that. And we're looking for a few people because we're doing it with a very small group to jump in and join. So send us an email and let us know that you're involved. And we would love to uh, welcome you to that community. So for now, until the next video, I'll see you again soon and stay strong.